بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويلكم This is a biochemistry two course code chem 342 and today we are having lecture 33 this uh, today topic is uh, riboflavin in niacin commonly called as vitamin b2 and vitamin b3 riboflavin and niacin are the two vitamins included in the vitamin b complex series this is your teacher dr naim khan chemistry department class outlines for today's topic includes chemistry of riboflavin and niacin we will highlight the chemistry of these two vitamins riboflavin and niacin we will elaborate the important sources as food available to human for both vitamin riboflavin and niacin then we will discuss the recommended uh, doses of these two vitamin riboflavin flavin and niacin for human beings we will point it out the rda recommended daily allowance for these two vitamins and at the end we will uh, explain some of the functions importantly known for riboflavin flavin and niacin so we will have four aspect studies of these two vitamins both riboflavin and niacin will be explained from the chemistry point of view we will discuss the important sources of these two vitamins and we will determine the human requirements recommended daily allowance rda for riboflavin and niacin and at the end we will discuss functions for each vitamin let to have a start riboflavin riboflavin is actually was first isolated from the milk whey which means the water liquid which is separated from the coagulated part of milk and that's why it was named as lactoflavin riboflavin was as uh, when originally called as lactoflavin and the reason was because it was first isolated from the water liquid separated from coagulated coagulable part of milk also it was termed overflavin because of its presence in the eggs and also as liver is a good source of this vitamin and it was also called as hepatoflavin so common names of riboflavin include lactoflavin hepatoflavin overflavin and these names were given because of their presence in different sources so based on the common sources they were sometimes called lactoflavin sometimes overflavin and sometimes hepatoflavin riboflavin is actually termed vitamin b2 and it is uh, was uh, most commonly known as yellow enzyme and this is because of its color it is having enzymatic function actually the coenzyme factor and because of its yellow color commonly known as yellow enzyme 2 first the first time it was synthesized by r corn and p kerr and these two scientists were the first who studied these vitamins their impacts and they must be given credit actually arkon is a, a german chemist a more known as he was awarded the nobel prize in chemistry in 1938 for his uh, great work on vitamins including vitamin b2 riboflavin and some other carotenoids too this is the picture of arkon riboflavin or vitamin b2 
मालिकुदर फार्मूला ए सी सेवेंटीन एच ट्वेंटी टू एन फोर ओ सिक्स एंड दिस इज एक्चुअली बिलोंगिंग टू द वाटर सॉल्युबल विटामिन यस ऑल बी विटामिन्स आर वाटर सॉल्युबल अलोंग विद विटामिन सी सो वेर राइब ऑफ लेवन इज हैविंग मालिकुदर फार्मूला ऑफ सी सेवेंटीन एच ट्वेंटी एन फोर ओ सिक्स एंड दिस इज अ वाटर सॉल्युबल विटामिन structure of riboflavin consists of sugar alcohol which is common as riribitol which is attached to the dimethyl isoeloxazine ring and that is attached at position number 9 we see the structure this is uh, dimethyl isoeloxazine look two methyl here at position number 6 and position number 7 so dimethyl Eloxacin, and this is position number nine. We are a uh, sugar alcohol. Your deribitol is linked. So, from the chemistry point of view, structure of uh, riboflavin include uh, six, seven dimethyl eloxacin, which is linked at position number nine with deribitol. This structure can be traced in GLJN by chemistry book. important sources of riboflavin include milk cheese eggs liver kidney heart and breviring yeast breviring yeast are excellent sources of vitamin b2 or riboflavin especially eggs liver and yeast they are important very important sources of riboflavin cow milks contain very high concentration of uh, riboflavin and it is uh, has been estimated that about five times riboflavin amount is high in cow milk than in human milk leafy vegetables are also good sources of riboflavin fruits and root vegetables contain moderate quantities not very high or not very low while whole grain cereals in milk flour contain very low content so whole grain and cereals are not that much known as rich sources riboflavin contents in cereal increases during germination this is very important point if seeds are allowed to germinate then concentration of riboflavin increases human requirements the recommended human requirement amount of riboflavin daily requirement of riboflavin is from 0.6 to 1.7 mg for children and adults and during pregnancy and lactation the women require uh, high amount of riboflavin which may be increased up to 2 mg per day riboflavin deficiency is caused by inadequate intake faulty absorption may also contribute in patient especially those suffering from hepatitis important functions of riboflavin riboflavin is needed for growth in overall good health it has the body to break down carbohydrate protein and fats to produce energy basically it's a very important coenzyme and to complete the metabolism process this vitamin is required so to get energy from the biomolecule carbohydrate protein and lipids riboflavin is required it allows oxygen to be used by the body via electron transport system actually the oxidation of uh, reduced molecule produced in the krebs cycle and in glycolysis is completed in the electron transport system where oxygen is used so this riboflavin is involved there performing a very important function especially of the uh, energy releasing which is used for the phosphorylation of adp to atp riboflavin occurs as a constituent of one of the two flavin coenzyme namely fmn 
flavin mononucleotide and flavin adenine dinucleotide these two coenzymes are very very common and these are actually made up of riboflavin is a component of these two enzyme coenzyme and these are very important on the metabolic point of view riboflavin when phosphorylated give fmn and when fmn further react to mp it gives fad these two enzymes are involved in the electron transport chain these are actually uh, synthesized in the krebs cycle and in the glycolysis and later on oxidized in the electron transport chain these are actually involved in the redox reactions here we can see the basic formula of fmnf fad and actually they are accepting proton or releasing proton so they are involved in the uh, redox reaction look fad or fmn when an oxidized form and when they receive proton they accept proton so they become to this structure fmn fad h2 one hydrogen is uh, attached here one here look this this is oxidized form but when it accept two proton it gives like this so in this mechanism they are involved in the oxidation induction reactions this can be traced in the glgen fundamental biochemistry book coming to the next uh, vitamin of today's talk is niacin niacin is commonly called as vitamin b3 and chemically it is nicotinic acid actually nicotine is a well known substance and if we give nicotinic acid name to a vitamin this will make confusion so that's why the name nicotinic acid which may mislead people is that tobacco is nutritious although tobacco is not considered as a nutritious substance and in, in order to avoid such misleading therefore officially nicotinic acid name is not used it is given niacin name vitamin b3 is nicotinic acid but it is given official name is niacin so as to avoid any misleading uh, that tobacco is nutritious earlier uh, it was named as pellagra preventive factor because it is curing pellagra disease niacin Uh, has having curing action against black tongue disease in dogs black tongue disease is also another important disease uh, that occurs in dogs so this is this is a vitamin is having curing action on anti on the black tongue disease in dogs so it is also known as anti black tongue factor molecular formula of vitamin b3 or niacin is c6h4o2n and it is one of the simplest vitamin of all b series actually it is pyridine pyridine derivative pyridine we know a six membered ring having nitrogen in the ring and alternate double single bond i repeat pyridine is a six membered ring with nitrogen in the uh, ring and there is a continuous flow of electron over the ring nicotinamide is synthesized by imidation of nicotinic acid in kidney brain and liver so we will have two forms of um, the vitamin nicotinamide and nicotinic acid the nicotinamide again i must mention is called niacinamide because the nicotine word is not used so as it may mislead people that tobacco is nutrition so just like uh, nicotinic acid is termed as niacin so nicotinamide derivative of the nicotinic acid is called niacinamide here the structure just a pyridine ring having a uh, uh, acid group at position 3 and this can be change to a derivative it may be changed to nicotinamide by imidation when the oh is replaced by amino group so basically vitamin 
B3 is nicotinic acid found officially as niacin or it is occurring in the amine derivative form nicotinamide which is termed officially as niacinamide. Important sources of niacin or vitamin B3. It is widely distributed in plant and animal tissues. Uh, actually, tryptophan, important amino acid which we take in our food, that can be converted to niacin in the, uh, in the body, which is partially substituted for niacin supply. So even uh, we must know that if uh, tryptophan is lavishly taken in the food, the part of nicotine uh, niacin or nicotinic acid is partly supplied. Niacin is the most abundantly found in yeast. Yeast is the richest source. Also, liver, uh, lean pork, salmon, poultry, and red meat are very important sources of niacin. Cereals contain small amounts, so they cannot be regarded as chief sources. Vegetable and fruits are poor sources of this vitamin. Similarly, milk and eggs contain very little or practically no niacin, but they are good pellagra preventive. Why? Because of the rich source of tryptophan. Tryptophan is uh, present in high amount in the uh, eggs and milk and as we highlighted that this can be converted to niacin so because of the high amount of tryptophan they are also having anti activity. Niacin is stable or to heat so uh, oxidation or ordinary cooking is not going to affect this vitamin in the food. Like I mean, most of the niacin is lost in the milling process. So, milling process must be done carefully. Human requirements of niacin. The recommended daily loss of nicotinic acid or niacin is 8 to 15 milligram for children, 15 to 20 milligram for men, and 13 to 15 milligrams for women. These are the RDA concept amounts for niacin. Pregnant and lactating mothers require high amounts and it may be increased up to 20 milligram daily. Functions of niacin. Niacin cure plague rats and black tongue in dogs. So this is important vitamin and we must uh, mention the here that it is anti plagra factor and anti black tongue uh, factor. So this vitamin is curing plagra disease in humans or black tongue disease in dogs. This play a role in the converting the food we eat into energy. It's a very important coenzyme involved in the electron transport chain. So getting energy from the food is possible because of its important role. It helps the body to use protein and fats, keeps the skin, hair, and nervous system of the body healthy. Important benefits of vitamin B3 include potential of uh, lowering cholesterol level, antioxidation, and anti-inflammatory properties. So vitamin B3 is also known to reduce uh, cholesterol level. It is antioxidative functioning and also into in, it is anti-inflammatory in its characteristics. Nicotinic acid or nicotinamide or we can say niacin is the important constituent of these two coenzymes NAD and NAD, NADP. And these two enzymes are involved in the redox reaction. Here we can see that this is NAD, and NAD is accepting proton here. When it is reduced, it accepts proton. When it is oxidized, it releases proton. So, in this way, it is involved in the oxidation reduction reaction. This is NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And if we go to the NADP, 
like here, it is accepting proton here, this one, and it becomes two. So NADP is accepting proton here, and in this way, by accepting and releasing, it is helping out the oxidation reduction reaction, which is uh, enabling the passing of uh, energy of high energy electron when passed from one molecule to a lower energy molecule, the energy is released and that is used for the phosphorylation of ADP to ATP. Dear students, have a detailed thorough uh, study in the recommended books, Western Todd and GLJ develop uh, an, an explanatory concept and it will, um, uh, uh, try to uh, complete in detail. If there are any confusion, we may discuss later on. From today, thanks. Allah Hafiz.